Good day and welcome to today's webinar, the all new Storage Operations Manager. Uh, while uh, attendees are still joining, we are going to be asking a, a polling question. Stephanie? So, which Vivid special interest groups are you a member of? Please take some time and, and select the option that applies. Okay, it looks like we've had about 50% uh, that have voted. So if we can go to the next slide. And there's the results from uh, everyone for that uh, polling question. So again, welcome everyone to today's webinar, the all new HP Storage Operations Manager. Uh, next slide, please. And this webinar is brought to you by HP Software. And my name is Ron Cornwell. I am the moderator for today's webinar. I am the Data Center Automation Special Group Interest Group Leader for Vivid Worldwide. Next slide. Your hosts for today are uh, Kara McMillan and Vikram Christian Murthy. Uh, Kara is a product manager for HP's software storage management solutions. Uh, she has over 16 years of experience in storage resource management uh, software. And Vikram is a system architect for HP's store, software storage management solutions. And he has nearly 15 years of experience in storage software development and design. Next slide, please. Just a couple of housekeeping items for today's webinar. Uh, today's live session is intended for all Vivid members. The recording will be posted in the webinar section on the Vivid website visible to all members. Additionally, today's slide deck and the webinar recording will be made available to you. We will send you the link via email once they are posted on the Vivid website. If you have any questions as we go along, please type and send them in using the questions pane in the webinar control panel. Next slide. Here's a picture of the GoToWebinar control panel that usually appears in the upper right hand corner of your screen. To submit a question, make sure the question pane is expanded and type in your question and click on send. So let's get started and I'll pass it over to Kara. Thank you, Ron. Um, do you want to go ahead and advance to the, um, the next slide, please? Um, good morning and welcome. Um, the uh, webinar that we're going to um, that we're going to present to you today is about HP software um, storage management solution, our newest solution, Storage Operations Manager. Um, my name is Kara McMillan. I'm the product manager for HP Software Storage Management Solutions, including um, the all-new Storage Operations Manager and our legacy product, Storage Essentials. Um, joining me today is Vikram Krishnamurthy. Um, he is the system architect for, um, for both products. 
And um, so the agenda we'll kind of call, try to follow today is um, I'll present to you the market challenges, um, a little bit about the features of 10O, and then um, Vikram will then switch over and do a live demo um, so, um, so you can get a feel for what the product actually looks like. And then we'll go into a little bit of a Q&A, um, taking some of the questions in the question manager. If we do see any questions um, pertinent in the question manager along the way, um, I think Ron or uh, Michael will bring them up um, and ask them during the call. So that, that's fine if you want to break in um, during, um, during the presentation. Okay? So um, thanks a lot. And go ahead and um, you can go on to the next slide. The next two slides I have here, um, this one and the next as well, um, are only in here as disclaimers. I have exactly one slide in here that has a, um, a picture of a kind of a future looking um, uh, screenshot. So I was forced to put these in by, um, by branding. So we can kind of skip over these real quick here and, um, and go on to um, our titles. So let's take a moment first to think about the typical, your typical day at work or at home. Everywhere you turn, you are inundated with information. Um, the exchange of ideas, their availability across a wide variety of business applications and platforms, social media, entertainment, all of this generates an overwhelming amount of information and it has to be stored somewhere. So growth in application data, business documents, multimedia, this impacts storage management of all storage devices, the SAN, the NAS, direct attached. And multimedia and documents are making up a very large portion of now what we store, and with an increasing proportion committed to fixed storage for compliance reasons. We also understand that um, as all of this data swells, um, the volumes of, of messages, messaging um, goes up every day. Um, and regulations require that more of these messages and documents be archived. At the same time, we have cloud and, on, um, cloud and virtualization offering performance um, efficiencies, and they're the changing the face of disaster recovery and application delivery at the same time while making everything um, more challenging to manage. Please go ahead. So if you consider that 25% of a typical IP budget is spent on storage hardware, so your SAN switches, your arrays, your net, network attached storage, this is a massive amount of storage capacity which drives a major requirement for IT admins to understand your usage and performance of, st of your storage capacity. And it's, you want to know how that storage is growing, which servers, to which server storage is allocated, and for a medium-sized business, let alone an enterprise, this can be an extremely difficult and time-consuming task. So that's why the need for storage um, resource management software exists. When we took um, a look at the market specifically for SRM software alone, it's, one point, it's a $1 billion market growing at a 6% annual rate. So that's a really, I mean, it's just a, a hugely growing market. Please, please ex um, go to the next slide. So today's storage technology is, is quite complex. As I said before, um, simply put, data storage technology is, is very complicated to, um, to manage. So in order to deliver immediate access to application data or quickly respond to business needs and ensure that the data is always available and never lost, you as an IT personnel uh, must have specialized knowledge, not only in storage, but also in networking, computing, and of course you have multiple vendors, so you have to be able to understand all of their specific interfaces as well. So as that data grows and the number of systems multiplies, this problem is likely to become much more pronounced unless your company pays specifically, specific um, attention to proactive capacity optimization, training of your staff and um, of, to ensure they have enough knowledge on all of these resources. Um, and then your resource utilization and consumption, um, as well as embracing the inevitable fact that data is growing um, depending on who you talk to, um, Forrester or Gartner, 
um, it can be anywhere from 20 to 60 percent annually. Next slide. So the next thing I'd like to look at is um, just kind of an example of how these challenges, um, you know, are what what these challenges are in a little bit more detail. So the first is data growth, and what we typically see at our customers is data growth of 40 to 60 percent. So at that rate, data is doubling every 18 months. So most of that growth comes from unstructured data. Um, a storage admin would be responsible for growing also the OPEX spend for managing this data. But that spend is pretty much flat these days. And in some cases, um, we know that there are, there's pressure on the storage manager to reduce that expenditure. So as you can see, there's a widening gap there between the rate of data growth and the expenditure of managing that data. So how do we bridge that gap? That's, that's the question. So the next piece of the puzzle is complexity. Complexity comes from about from uh, comes about from different solutions and technologies um, being um, excuse me being implemented to address specific business challenges. Um, if you add in multiple data centers, multiple geographies, this introduces even more complexity. And specifically from a storage management perspective. You know, we want to be able to see where all this complexity comes from. And on the next slide, um, I'm going to take a look through all of that from the specifically, um, specifically from the storage management standpoint. So, if we look at end-to-end -end storage management, you know, how do we get here? So, enterprise storage is provided by externally managed storage. So, do you remember we went from local iSCSI storage to external storage? So the reason we did that is because in moving to external storage, we created um, a pulled resource that is more efficient and flexible, and that's much easier for you to manage. Storage then can be allocated to systems from a central pool of storage without having to physically move that storage. <clears throat> so the sharing of storage should mean that fewer physical disks are required in comparison to local SCSI, and that storage can now be centrally managed. And shared storage was, of course, a prerequisite for clustering and virtualization technologies that we, um, that we rely upon um, shared storage to implement. And then we have physical disks. We have them sliced. We have them diced, um, the arrayed, or whichever storage virtualization technology you have, um, and eventually presented to host systems as LUNs um, via SAN zoning um, in the SAN fabric, and then LUN masking on the storage system. The next. Um, we add in the fact that each host system will be running applications to meet some sort of business requirement. And on top of that, further complicating things is the fact that different components of an infrastructure are typically managed via siloed teams. So all of the customers, um, oftentimes the case is the storage is managed by the SAN, uh, storage team, um, hosts are managed by the server team, and applications are managed by an application team. So among all these teams, the end-to-end -end management of the storage its, um, resources themselves becomes even more complex as multiple or heterogeneous vendors are added, um, which is often the case at um, almost every customer we visit. So every single layer of this abstraction, um, whether at the host, virtualization of hosts, storage, then provisioning on storage, each layer of this creates scope for storage to be misconfigured or lost. But it is possible to manage that infrastructure complexity. Next slide, please. So with one solution, you can bring order to that complexity. Um, managing heterogeneous storage assets from host to fabric to storage across all your locations improving your storage capacity planning to understand how much storage you have and then reclaim that unused storage space, reducing the cost of storage operations by increasing your staff's efficiency, which strategically planning for your future investment in, in storage, and then gaining also a full insight into your storage um, environment with storage analysis. So we, I would like to introduce Storage Operations Manager. Our slides are turning a little bit slowly today. Sorry about that. 
um, storage operations manager is built upon HP's network node manager framework. So if you are familiar with NNMI or um, it used to be OpenView in the past, um, if you're a user, you will recognize, um, you'll recognize the screenshots I have here from, um, from storage operations manager. Um, you know NNMI is a time-tested and extensible framework. It's very reliable and it enables us to have massive scalability to be able to discover and report on, uh, on your rapidly growing storage infrastructures. So I would like to take you few, um, through in the next few slides um, some of the um, priorities that we had um, for Storage uh, Operations Manager and in how we address those. So one of our first priorities was to have a radically simplified um, pro um, solution for you. When we designed Storage Operations Manager, simplification was, was probably our number one objective. Um, we made the, the, pro the product customer installable. Um, it installs very quickly. Our, our, uh, our, our probably our quickest install on silent mode was in 10 minutes. So it has a very quick time to value. Um, it also has a very responsive HTML5 based UI with, in with a lot of intuitive dashboards, which you'll see later on in the presentation when Vikram does the demo. In each of those um, dashboards, you'll be able to drill down to useful metrics in a minimum number of clicks. This was direct feedback that we had from our customers in the past that they, they wanted to get the data um, with you know, the, the, the fewest clicks um, possible. Um, another simplification in Storage Operations Manager is the ability for us to release new device content in a modular fashion. So as you add new device models to your environment, we will be able to develop um, for those devices off cycle from our releases. And then we would upload it for free to um, HP Live Network. This is our content sharing um, platform. Um, and you'll be able to download that free. And so that would be true of both, um, of both devices, con device content, and reporting content as we build out um, new reports. Next slide, please. So next. Um, I like to talk about scalability. So um, thanks to the NNMI framework, we are able to offer a massively scalable platform for, to be able to manage ever-expanding storage infrastructures. Um, the platform is able to accommodate customers with flat SANs and environments using um, NAT and multi-tenancy as well. Um, our reporting, I'd like to call out oh, as well, um, we're using Service Health Reporter. Um, Service Health Reporter, or SHR, is included with SOM. Um, and it's got a powerful Sybase IQ database um, data warehouse behind it. Um, and its report content is also included, um, and storage content is also included um, for SHR. Um, that data warehouse behind SHR allows for massive amounts of data from multiple SOM installations to quickly be rolled up and resolved at a global level. So you'll be able to see um, from, from different geographies or if you deploy uh, more than one storage operations manager um, server in, in, a, in a single data center, you'll be able to roll those up um, and report out at a, at a global um, reporting level in Service Health Reporter. Also in the area of scalability, I'll just call out that we're also, um, our d discovery is element-based, which will be able to provide a much faster and fresher data for um, more accurate decision making. Next slide, please. So, of course, SOM um, helps you to solve two of the main use cases for storage resource management. Those would be capacity and performance optimization. So, in the area of um, capacity optimization, um, we are able to identify sources of unused storage capacity. And so, we'll I'll be able to allow you, and Vikram will um, allude to this um, later in the demo as well. Um, to show you how to reclaim your storage from other um, that you may have lost out on your host. Um, it may have been allocated to a host and then and never used. And we'll be able to show you how you can reclaim that storage um, for, uh, and then, of course, repurpose it. And that would allow you, at that time, then that allows you time to delay your um, spending on additional storage hardware. In the area of performance management, we can also help you pinpoint areas of degraded performance um, within your infrastructure, and then when you address those, um, optimize the performance of your SAN. Next slide, please. Okay. 
In the area of um, storage analytics, this is an area we really want to get into. You know, we, we know we collect a lot, a massive amount of storage data, of course. So when we correlate this data, we want to be able to help customers analyze and again in the future predict areas of concern in the storage environment. So in short, um, if you have a metric A that's on a switch and metric B that's on an array, how can we correlate those to offer insight into the SAM? So this would be especially useful in the area of virtualization where customers have, um, say, thin provision storage um, on a virtual server environment. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Um, and I just want to kind of make a note on our um, customer feedback. We run an, uh, a program called Early Product Review. Um, in that early product review, uh, leading up to any release, we have um, a, su a subsection of our customers um, take our, our early product, or our beta version, into their environment and then test it themselves and give us their feedback. So prior to um, releasing uh, Storage Operations Manager in March, we um, had some of our largest customers worldwide participating in our, in our early uh, release program, and they provided us um, a lot of good feedback, and of course, um, we were able to incorporate much of that feedback into the product. And we had an overwhelmingly positive um, feedback from all of those customers in the program. Um, so, if you're out there and you do want to join the program next time around, uh, keep that in mind. Um, we do um, we do like to have um, lots of customers participating in our EPR program. So, um, I think with that, I'd like to actually. Like we'd like to show you what the product looks like. Um, I think right now we'll switch over to the demo, and then I think we have a polling question um, we'll ask right before the demo. So if you want to, and Stephanie, if you could put the polling question up there, we'll see what what kind of answers while um, Vikram is preparing to put the demo. Okay, the polling question is live. So the question is, what are your top challenges with storage resource management? Select all that apply. The answer choices are multiple tools, consoles to manage storage. Capacity optimization is the second choice. The third choice is performance optimization, troubleshooting problems. The fourth choice is managing storage growth. And the fifth choice is managing storage in a virtual server environment. So the votes are coming in, Kara and Ron. It looks like almost all of them are tied. <laughs> <laughs> but multiple tools and consolidating is uh, slightly ahead of everything else. And that's, that's pretty much in line with what we see at customers. Um, that the whole idea of having one pool to manage everything um, yep, there you go, about 70% have multiple tools, but um, everything else is, is not far behind. So um, it's good to see that kind of validates um, is what we're doing um, with the solution and um, just to help you manage, manage all of, um, to consolidate your tools um, and manage your capacity optimization. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Vikram um, if you're ready to do the demo now. Uh, yes, uh, Kara, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, good morning, uh, good evening to all. Uh, so basically, uh, today I will try to demonstrate uh, two or three use cases uh, uh, of uh, storage operations uh, manager. Uh, mainly around uh, capacity management and the topology, and if time permits, uh, I'll try to walk you through some of our uh, inventory views. Uh, so the, this is the uh, you know the landing page of the storage operations manager, which is an asset dashboard. Are you sharing, uh, Vikram? I don't think the sharing is working right now. I am. Oh, okay. Apologies. Can you see my uh, Can you see my screen now? Oh yes, now we can see it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the landing page uh, of uh, Storage Operations uh, Manager by default, which is a set dashboard. 
So this is a simplified dashboard of uh, you know the various types of uh, devices in your environment, uh, which will be hosts, uh, storage systems, uh, virtual machines, and switches, uh, which are basically um, you know uh, classified by the device uh, profiles or the different types of uh, um, you know based on the model vendor. So it's uh, you know the pie charts are uh, you can be drilled down into the pie charts. So you just uh, click on that, you get a filtered list. Uh, you know, of the um, you know particular uh, pie chart or the type that you mentioned here, the device families, as you can see. Uh, so the navigation uh, is through the you know the breadcrumbs. Uh, you don't use the you know the browser back button to navigate. So it's uh, you know you can navigate back and uh, you know uh, browse through uh, whatever uh, you know you are interested in and uh, really what you want to take a look at that. So this kind of uh, presents to you what's uh, discovered in your environment, what are the different kind of devices, what are the operating system platforms, and um, you know uh, the switches and the storage systems that I have in my environment. So moving on to the environment uh, capacity dashboard. Uh, so typically we have uh, you know the multi-level uh, drill-down uh, dashboards. And uh, what you see here is uh, at the environment level. Uh, this is the dashboard for uh, all the devices uh, in your environment. Just uh, gives you a snapshot of uh, what your uh, environment looks like uh, right now. So the environment summary is a count of your devices. Uh, typically, you will see that uh, you know hosts will be the maximum number of devices in your environment. And in this case, it's about 75% is host. Uh, then you will have the switches, and then storage systems, and your uh, NAS devices. Uh, and then uh, for each uh, device type, uh, we have selected uh, one metric at, that we present at the environment level, uh, so that you can, uh, you know, gain a simple perspective on on uh, of the capacity uh, status in your environment at, at at that point of time. So, for example, here you look at the storage system uh, pool capacity, and what this tells you is uh, what is the total pool capacity and uh, of all the arrays in the environment level. And then how much is uh, been allocated? That means uh, uh, you know how many uh, volumes uh, have been created out of these pools, and how much space is available for uh, expansion in this environment. So here you can see that about uh, you know 75 to 80 percent of your uh, uh, storage uh, in this particular environment, the data center uh, that I have discovered, you can see that about uh, 80, 75 to 80 percent of your uh, um, you know, uh, environment is uh, the, the pool capacity is being allocated. That means you have grow. You know, you, know, you have scope for about 25% uh, expansion uh, within the pool uh, capacity. So the next is uh, this is the storage uh, provider layer, and next to jump down to the um, you know host logical capacity. So which kind of tells you how the storage that is allocated from here is really being uh, you know utilized in the host level. So here you can see that uh, you know out of the total pool capacity, I have allocated about 75% of them, and uh, of, of, of all the storage that is typically allocated, uh, about uh, you know 50% of it being, is being used, and about 50% uh, is uh, you know roughly more than 50% uh, is uh, um, is uh, free. Uh, so now uh, what uh, this number doesn't add up to the pie here, uh, basically because you may not have discovered all the hosts in your environment, and uh, you know. Collected all the, uh, the the file system logical capacity details from those. So so this is for the discovered host. Uh, among the discovered hosts, we will present you a snapshot of how much of the file system uh, capacity is being used and how much is uh, available. So here you can see that uh, my uh, utilization levels are slightly on the higher side, but I don't have the danger of running out of uh, you know storage uh, in the near future because in the consumption layer, I still have about only 50% of uh, you know consumption. Um, moving to the NAS system capacity, we have a typical, uh, you know, the uh, a typical NAS system capacity, file system capacity, and you can see here that uh, you know what's free and uh, what's uh, really available. So finally, we have the switch port utilization dashboard. Uh, so this kind of tells you uh, the number of free ports available in your uh, switches and uh, to expand your uh, fabric. So here you can see that uh, roughly more than um, you know. Uh, more than a quarter of your uh, ports uh, uh, are free to be available. And overall, if you look at the system, we seem to be fairly well placed at this point of time. And um, you know, we have uh, fairly decent uh, uh, allocation levels and uh, moderate uh, consumption levels of capacity. 
and there is scope for expansion or addition of uh, new host into the new host or storage devices into the system without having to procure uh, you know additional uh, fabric or uh, switch devices so so fairly it tells me uh, in a snapshot that uh, i'm in an okay situation i don't need to worry about uh, any immediate uh, you know um, uh, cost of uh, procuring additional uh, uh, devices in my environment. So, but this is one perspective. Now, you really want to drill down into more details, uh, analyze uh, what is the, you know, while pool capacity is uh, what has been carved out of uh, raw capacity. So, you want to understand uh, how the raw capacity itself, uh, utilization itself is happening, and then uh, gain different perspectives on the uh, storage system side. So, you just uh, come to the environment summary, uh, summary and uh, click on the storage systems uh, pie and you are taken to the another dashboard uh, set of dashboards uh, which are for all the storage systems uh, in your environment so this is what we call the storage system uh, capacity dashboard so with this dashboard we are trying to present uh, three simple perspectives uh, on on the capacity utilization in your environment so the first perspective is uh, by the uh, you know is on the raw storage in your environment which is, is uh, typically the raw storage uh, on the array uh, and then we will give you the top 10 devices by raw use capacity and the raw available capacity. So now what you want to look for here is, uh, you know, if, you, if, if a device shows up in the uh, top 10 of the raw used capacity and then it's not showing up in the top 10 of the raw available capacity, then it kind of indicates that the storage device uh, is relatively running out of, uh, you know, raw storage. You can drill down into that storage and analyze uh, how much of the cross storage is being uh, used in the pool level. But uh, here, if you see, uh, we can see that uh, this uh, storage device uh, named uh, Sunflower uh, is uh, right up there in terms of uh, the raw use capacity with about uh, 53 terabytes. And it's also right up there uh, when, when it comes to the raw available uh, capacity, which is uh, with about uh, roughly about um, you know 4.7 terabytes of uh, available uh, storage. So this tells me that overall this is a very heavily configured, uh, you know, a heavily provisioned uh, uh, storage system in my environment. So similarly, you can look at uh, other devices and where they appear. And you can see here that uh, the device Olive is uh, right up there and uh, we don't need to worry about procuring new, uh, you know, uh, more disk storage to so that one right now. And uh, similarly, you can make, uh, you know, some uh, uh, simple uh, inferences. So what you don't, uh, what you see here is uh, for some of these uh, X, the XP and P9500 devices, you have used up all the raw available, uh, all the raw storage, and uh, you know you don't have any of the, um, you know, um, uh, available uh, raw storage uh, in the available uh, column. So the next perspective is uh, to understand uh, where I stand. In terms of uh, the current, uh, you know, uh, having to provision uh, the uh, mo uh, more storage. So there you see the logical unallocated uh, storage, which is the uh, storage available uh, in my pools, configured pools for creation of uh, more volume. So here you can see the top ten arrays uh, by unallocated uh, storage, which is uh, sorted by the storage, and you get a uh, you know uh, chart uh, perspective of uh, how the uh, unallocated uh, absolute storage measures up against the overall uh, storage. So, for example, uh, you can see here that uh, though the uh, array sunflower appears in the top 10 uh, in terms of available uh, storage, uh, you will see that uh, in terms of the percentage utilization of your uh, allocated uh, pool, uh, pool storage, it's pretty much up there. It's almost completely fully utilized. So, though it has, uh, you know, uh, uh, about uh, a terabyte of uh, storage uh, free. So you can, um, you know, you uh, you know that uh, you are fairly well placed uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, in this uh, based on this parameter, and uh, uh, you are, you know, we don't need to worry about uh, unallocated uh, uh, storage right now, and we we seem to have enough of it. That's kind of what you infer from there. So the next perspective we have is uh, basically around uh, uh, storage reclamation. So that uh, perspective is provided by the logical unmapped uh, storage. So when we say unmapped storage, uh, what we really mean is that uh, you know you can see here that uh, the unallocated storage is in the green and the allocated storage is in the blue. So what this means is out of the total pool uh, you know size of, for example, for this array gravity, 
out of a total pool size of about 28 terabytes you know i have used up 22 terabytes of the pool uh, volume uh, you know pool uh, storage uh, to create multiple volumes so uh, when i create multiple volumes i have to map them to different hosts using the host security group configuration in order for that storage to be consumed by the host or the server however what happens in unmapped storage is you create these volumes and you don't expose them or present them or map them to any of the hosts or servers in your environment. So then that volume becomes kind of great space. So it's just sitting there and consuming storage, but it is not being really um, you know, consumed by the server uh, uh, layer because it's not exposed to that. So that's kind of what we can directly reclaim. Uh, how do you reclaim that storage? Uh, what you do is uh, you kind of, um, you know, either delete those volumes, in which case the deleted volume space comes back into the unallocated uh, uh, bucket, or you go and map that to different servers or hosts, in which case it kind of comes to the mapped storage and it's really not uh, reclaimable space. So in either uh, cases, you have reclaimed the storage from the unmapped uh, storage column by either moving it, by either utilizing it uh, and allocating it to the host layer, or by reclaiming that space into the unallocated, uh, uh, you know, pool uh, storage. So that's kind of how uh, we, uh, you know, go about uh, analyzing the different uh, storage capacity perspectives in the environment uh, based on the four dashboards. So these dashboards only show the top ten of your uh, environment, and if you want to. Uh, look at all the arrays in your environment. You you uh, you see a small table here, uh, which uh, presents a tabular uh, presentation of all the metrics that we showed here. Uh, so uh, what you do is, if you want to play around with it, you just uh, click this pop button and uh, pop it out of this uh, into a separate browser window, where you can resize it. And you can see here that uh, we have added all the perspectives here. So here is the raw used and available and the percentages. And then you have the unallocated, unmapped uh, uh, percentage, and all the storages. So this is, uh, you know, you can sort it, filter it uh, based on criteria, or uh, you know, you can really play around with this uh, table, and uh, you know, understand how. For example, if you are uh, interested in, uh, you know, looking at all arrays that have uh, a raw use capacity of, uh, you know, more than a certain value, so you could create a filter, and you know. You say, show me everything that is, uh, for example, greater than um, five terabytes. So let's say five thousand, right? So then this gets filtered, and you can see that you know you have the list of all storage storage that has more than five terabytes. Oh, Let me make that a higher number. So, okay, so that looks uh, better. So that's how you uh, go about analyzing the storage uh, system capacity in your environment. So the next level of uh, drill down is uh, provided by uh, you know clicking on the particular storage system you see here. In which case, it takes you to the element level dashboard. The dashboard for that particular storage system. It's one more level of drill down. And there you can see all the capacity and the collective performance statistics on that particular device. So this is a consistent uh, navigation mechanism. Everywhere uh, you see, uh, select an element, you can launch a dashboard of that element, where you get a, a quick summary of the storage system. So you can see that this is, uh, you know, this is a three-par uh, storage system, and um, you know this is, uh, um, um, you know, this is successfully discovered in the environment. And we can see what is the raw capacity, the logical usage, and when you drill down into the element level, you can also analyze the post trade allocation and the post trade usage metric. This is basically the pin poisoning allocation and the pin poisoning uh, physical usage uh, metrics. So then you see some other uh, data on the device, like for example, what are the configured uh, performance uh, collection schedules for this device, and some of the collected metrics on the device. You can see the total data rate, the I/O rate, you know. The response time, the queue depth, uh, volume rate, and 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 uh, uh, a more uh, uh, you know metric at the storage uh, system level. 
So this is uh, how you uh, work with uh, advanced uh, capacity. And it works pretty much the same for all the device types. For example, if you down into the host, you will see the host. Vikram, I believe we've lost you on audio. There you go. He's dialing in again. Kara, is there anything to note about the screen we're seeing while we get Vikram back in? Oh, well, I was just going to say while I'm waiting for while we're waiting for Vikram, I could. Um, there are a few poll questions um, that I'd like to take an to, to take um, a few minutes to answer. Um, we had a bunch of poll pollers ask about different integrations. So I'll just kind of go down the line. Um, so the first one I saw here was a request um, for a UCMDB integration. And um, the answer to that is we have um, a beta right now in process um, for UCMDB integration. If you are interested in that, um, my, my um, contact information will be on a slide later in, in the deck. I would urge you to please contact me and then we could work with you um, we're even able to right now um, under NDA show that to customers. So if you are interested in the UCMDB integration, please contact me. Um, and then the other two that we are working on for future, um, we had um, requests for a VPV integration here. And um, let me see, there was another one here for an integration, um, which was, oh, it's not actually an integration, it's for object storage and helium content. And um, object storage, Helion, and um, VPV content are all on my product roadmap. So um, again, I would urge you to please contact me so I can understand your use cases, um, what you would, you know, how, if your particular customers are looking for something um, very specific um, use, use case-wise, um, I'd like to understand that um, a little bit more to ensure that as we build that out, um, that we're, we're meeting those, um, we're solving those problems. And then I had one more question here from Nick Lee, where is it, um, about element-based discovery. So um, <clears throat> this is different. Um, if you were familiar with Storage Essentials in past, um, which is a Storage Operations Manager, of course, is a successor product to Storage Essentials. Um, if you were familiar with how Storage Essentials um, did discovery in the past, um, what you had to do in SE was um, schedule your discoveries. So you had to schedule each, um, all of your hosts and storage elements um, into a discovery, and then they would um, kind of run successively. And if you had an issue with any one part of that discovery, say it got hung up on an array, um, anything after that array would you know, have to be sitting around waiting on that array to finish discovering before a discovery for the next element. Um, and so the difference with Storage Operations Manager is um, every single element is discovered independently of every other element in the environment. So if, if one array gets hung up in, during its discovery, it will not affect any other element in the, um, in, the, um, in the SAN that we're discovering. So everything will discover independently um, of everything else. So that's where um, I'm talking about, um, that's what I mean by element-based. Um, and then I, probably um, we wouldn't get into this in the demo today, but um, just kind of further drilling down into that is the idea of um, being able to um, configure those discoveries um, very, um, very specifically. So you can say um, how often uh, the, that, how fresh the data should be for any specific element. So for instance, you want to say, I don't want my three parts to be any, discovered any um, further apart than 15 minutes. Then you can do that for those arrays. Or um, on the flip side, you can also specify blackout period. Say you have a backup or something going on in your environment in the middle of the night. You can say from 2 to 4 in the morning, don't do any discovery, don't bother these, um, these elements because um, I have some very important work going on here. So you can set blackout periods even down even to 15 minutes or so you can uh, really control the amount of data and when you collect it. Um, hey, Sarah, uh, I'm back oh, online. Back on. uh, okay, yeah. great. Sorry, I'll sorry, for, sorry. And, yeah, no problem. I was yeah, just answering uh, some questions. Carrier here uh, disconnects the call after one hour, so I think that's what happened. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> 
have real problems. Okay, so can we can I continue with the demo? Sure. Yep. Please do. Okay. Um, so we were looking at the uh, the host uh, capacity dashboard. So it's pretty similar uh, in navigation to the storage system capacity. We have uh, you know four uh, dashboards for the host as well. Uh, so the first two are by file system used and uh, free space, and the next two are uh, pretty interesting. These are again uh, reclamation stories. So one is the unused uh, volume group capacity. So this is uh, basically all the you know the capacity that is uh, unconfigured or unused in your uh, volume groups, and uh, this is what we call as uh, gray space. You know because it is uh, from the perspective of the disk, it is utilized because the disk is uh, assigned to the volume group. Uh, but uh, if you really see that space is uh, unused because you have not configured volumes uh, out of the, um, you know, the volume group. So it's very similar to the unallocated uh, storage available in the pool space uh, in a storage system. And the new uh, uh, metric that we have here, which is not a used and uh, which is an absolute number, uh, it's not a used and free concept, is uh, what we have as unused storage. So basically, these are all the volumes that are assigned to the host. So if you remember previously, I mentioned that uh, you you know you move the storage from unmapped to mapped to reclaim that storage and make it usable by the server layer. But you could still not use those uh, disks that show up on the server to configure anything on them. You could neither configure a volume group on that, or you know, not configure a file system, or not allocate it to any uh, any application like Oracle ASM. So that is what we call as white space or unused storage. And so you, what you see here is uh, basically uh, the, you know, the uh, the top ten uh, by that, and you could just, uh, you know, kind of drill down into that, and then you get down into the element level dashboard of the host, and you see that uh, for this particular storage system, you have uh, an EVA, um, you know, system that is, uh, uh, you know, presenting um, 200 and uh, roughly about two uh, terabytes of uh, storage. Uh, and then you can drill down into your, uh, you know, uh, okay, for some reason the uh, unused uh, storage is not showing up here, but ideally it should uh, show up in this uh, column. So that's kind of how you, uh, you know, uh, Kara mentioned that uh, as and when you create, uh, uh, you know, every abstraction layer uh, of uh, storage configuration, uh, you have a scope for uh, misconfiguring and uh, losing storage. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we are trying to highlight here at different levels. That uh, you know you could leave uh, storage unused at the raw storage level. You could forget to create or assign them to pools. Once you assign them to pools, you could forget to create volumes out of those. Once you create volumes, you could forget to map those to the host. And once you assign it or map to the host, you could really forget to configure them or use them in the host. So here we have the workflows to basically highlight the capacity parameters at every single configuration level and clearly bring out what is used, what is unused at every single level. So that's kind of how we have designed the environment uh, capacity dashboards uh, at the different levels for the host storage system. And uh, switches is pretty straightforward. It's just the used and unused ports. And uh, you have uh, similar navigation for the NAS uh, storage systems as well. So this is basically we show the total used and free for a NAS storage device. Uh, so that's uh, kind of complete the capacity of um, you know the management uh, main use cases uh, within the system. So let me quickly jump into the topology maps and how we show the system topology and uh, how we can navigate into the uh, ele individual element topology based on that. So uh, what we do here is that uh, we have adopted a paradigm where we don't uh, you know we don't paint all the elements in all the fabrics at one shot. So what we do is we just select the fabric on the top of the list and we just paint it. So if you want to see more things, you may want to select the fabric that you want to see or you just say show all. And once you select the fabric filter, you just apply the filter and the map quickly shows up. So what you see here is that uh, this is a HTML5 based UI and it paints uh, about 200 and you know roughly 300, uh, uh, just less than 300 uh, map objects in pretty quick, uh, you know, uh, pretty quick time. So you can zoom in on the map. You can uh, zoom in at different levels in the map, and you can um, you know zoom around uh, with this uh, pane that you see here, and uh, you can see uh, what area of the map uh, that you want to zoom in on. 
we have uh, one more uh, level of filter uh, available uh, to view the maps uh, because if you show all the connections across all devices, it could get cluttered. You may want to look at only the host to storage, uh, you know, the host to features connectivity or to the array and switch connectivity. So just select the appropriate filter and I apply and then you see that the map uh, kind of uh, reduces and now uh, you paint the filtered map uh, in your environment. So there you see the filtered map uh, which shows only the storage systems and the switches in your environment. So the map also supports a search functionality. You could just look for a particular array. For example, let's look for sunflower. And you can see that um, you know it uh, auto completes as well. You can select the element that you are looking at. And immediately you will see that the element is highlighted. It is zoomed in, brought into focus. And then well, as soon as you highlight an element, the analysis pane or the summary for that shows up in the analysis pane area in the lower half of the uh, screen. So you can see that this is a storage system, which is a three-pass system uh, with a you know a three to one uh, hardware level. And uh, you can also see, uh, for example, map count is the uh, number of licenses that is being consumed uh, by this device. And access point is the uh, you know is, uh, is the IP address or the proxy used to discover this uh, particular uh, device. And you can see what is the data collection policy that applies to that. And uh, since this is a storage system. You could, um, you know, at, at a high level, you could browse through the different, um, you know, the logical uh, thin provisioning, uh, you know, and all the other screens that we saw in the element dashboard in a neatly arranged uh, tabbed manner. If you want to drill down into the details, you just uh, double click on the element and you will, you will be taken into the, um, you know, form detailed form view of the, uh, of the particular system. You will notice that uh, the view below doesn't change. But what we are presenting is more details on the storage system in terms of the inventory. You can see the volumes. And you can see that uh, the UI is uh, you know, pretty responsive. Uh, by the way, this is not uh, what you're seeing here is not canned data. This is all uh, live discovered data in our uh, system. And uh, you can see that uh, you have a close to 3,000 volumes and it loads uh, pretty quickly. I can scroll down to anywhere in the middle. It kind of comes up uh, you know, pretty fast. You can see that uh, you know what is the scroll window that we are uh, really looking at, and at every single tab that you see, if you want to view it in a bigger, uh, wider screen or wider uh, uh, resolution, you can just pop out of that uh, window uh, uh, like we did earlier, and then you can look into that uh, you know in, in in more detail. So we so we show the disk drives. We don't collect disk drive data by default. You will have to configure that uh, to be specifically corrected. So you can see the storage pools. And you can see the you know the host security group uh, configurations. Uh, you see the uh, replication pairs. You can see all the replication uh, target source uh, and the copy type and all the other details. And uh, then you can see the pool uh, logical usage. Uh, so what you see here is the logical usage at the array level. And what you see here in the map above is the logical usage, uh, the pool usage that is split at the individual pool level. So you add all this up, it kind of uh, shows up, uh, adds up to the last entry in this map. That's kind of how you look at this. So you can look at uh, all the thin provisioning uh, metrics. You can, um, you know, this is a pretty wide table. You could expand it. Um, you know, you can look at all the different uh, thin provisioning numbers. And you can aggregate them using the allocation and the usage uh, tabs uh, uh, in the analysis pane. So that's kind of how you navigate the inventory data for a particular element. Now what you may want to do uh, is, uh, for example, uh, you know, you can show all the systems and uh, um, you may want to look at uh, an individual, uh, you know, uh, element uh, uh, capacity uh, for an individual, uh, uh, rather the topology for an individual element. In which case you try to look for a host. For example, this I know is one of our hosts and I just select uh, this host Innova. And as you can see, it gets uh, highlighted here. And if I want to drill down into the topology, what we have provided is a way uh, to navigate the topology of an element. So instead of uh, you know presenting all the storage paths uh, that are visible to a particular host, 
So what we do is, uh, you know, we provide a mechanism to basically, um, you know, uh, uh, navigate the topology based on different uh, criteria and zoom in on uh, specific paths, uh, you know, that you are interested in. So what I can do here is I can right click on the element and here you see a bunch of options and I can say launch topology. And then you can see that the element connectivity of that particular host uh, shows up here. And I can browse further details based on multiple filters available here. So I can, for example, I can choose a particular volume for which I want to analyze the path here. Or I may want to see a bunch of uh, uh, volumes based on some criteria. For example, I want to see all the top 25 volumes uh, by size. I just apply the filter. Okay. Mr. Kormak, I'm sorry to break in on you there. Um, in the interest of time, uh, we're um, coming to the top of the hour here, and um, okay. I just wanted to give um, some of the, uh, some answers back to some of the questions in the question manager, if you don't mind. Yes. I think uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm almost uh, done as well. So that's the point okay. I wanted to highlight was that uh, you you look at your uh, connectivity in the system topology, and you just zoom in on an element that you are interested. If you want to drill down on that just right click and navigate the topology for that uh, particular element. So I think uh, uh, that that kind of covers the capacity management and the topology use cases. Uh, and, and as you said, uh, since we are at the top of the hour, I'll just uh, you know hand the control over to you for your uh, question and answers. OK. Go ahead, Kara. Thank you, Vikram. So if you want to go ahead and go back to the deck, um, I'll um, can kind of finish up there. Um, I know we had um, someone in, in the question manager um, asking for contact information. So um, we'll get back to anyone who had to drop there at the top of the hour. Um, um, I just wanted to, to finish up um, just kind of a call to action for you in the audience. Um, we'd like to invite you to please learn a little bit about um, SOM for yourself. We have a three-minute animated video short up on our hp.com um, Go page that you can find. And also from there, you'll be able to download SOM and try it out for yourself. Um, it comes with a 60-day license um, um, instant on. Um, so you can take the download and um, try it out for yourself. And then let us know what you think. Um, these, are, this is, um, these are some of the contact information. Um, I'm here, Kara McMillan at the top. Michael is the product marketing manager, and Dan is the um, product uh, manager for partners. So if any of you are partners, um, you may know Dan. He does put out a, a monthly newsletter. Um, I'd also like you to, um, if you or your customers will be at Discover um, from the 2nd to the 4th of June, um, I'd like to indicate that we'll have not only a booth on the show floor in the HP Software Pavilion or area, but we'll also be um, showing some future items in the tech showcase um, in the NDA area. And then we'll also be presenting three sessions. And the one I'd like to specifically call out is um, the session on the third that will be presented with um, our customer, um, Philip Sellers of HTC, who was one of our early product reviewers. Um, so with that, I, I think I want to just um, address a couple of questions people still have time. Um, let me see. There were um, there's a question probably for Vikram on how do you manage thin provision volumes over provisioning of storage capacity in an array. I don't know if that's some, oh Eugene lost a call actually. So that's something we may have to follow up um, with afterwards because he's no longer on the call. Um, okay. Another question um, we had was um, licensing. Um, we license by maps, um, managed access ports. Um, what we did for Storage Operations Manager was simplify our licensing. So um, we have a basic package called Premium. Um, within that, you are um, licensed by ports, of course. And um, within that, you get capacity management, um, chargeback, showback, um, NAS management, and reporting. And then we have a, another level above that called Ultimate Performance. And that includes everything in the, in the premium package. Plus, you'll also be able to um, do performance management as well. So our perf, what we had in Storage uh, Essentials was called Perf Packs. So you'll be able to do that performance management in Storage Operations Manager at that ultimate perf level. And then within each of those two packages, we have tiering based on, on volume purchase, right? So if you're purchasing more 
um, maps, then you would get a lower price per, per map. Um, another question I have here is, can I install SOM in an already installed NNMI? And um, so we don't, we don't um, actually, SOM is not, it's a separate product from NNMI, so it doesn't install with it. Um, the product that actually we do install with, if you have existing, is SHR. So if you have an existing service health reporter for the reporting part, um, if you already have that in your environment, then you can um, pull in your data from SOM into um, storage, uh, service health reporter. Um, let me see. Um, Let's see, there was a question here about, uh, oh, first of all, someone asked when it's going to be released, and it's already released. Um, we released the product on March 31st. So again, if you go out to our um, hp.com slash go slash SOM, um, you'll be able to download the product right now, and that's the trial version. Um, it's the actual product. It, the only thing you'll miss, you're missing from that is, um, is the reporting. So you'll, you'll be able to just be able to navigate the product just um, as Vikram demo just now. And um, the other question that maybe Vikram can answer is like NNM, can you see network device issues in the topo view that are affecting the performance of the SAN? And I think uh, that's uh, more of a monitoring, uh, uh, sounds more like a monitoring use case, uh, Chara and uh, and that's uh, that's in the roadmap. The version 10.0 doesn't, uh, you know, that doesn't support uh, a monitoring, proactive monitoring uh, use cases yet. So that that should come up uh, in the roadmap. Okay. And along with that um, answer that the monitoring is, is is in our roadmap and coming up, um, um, it's it's on our roadmap in the next release. Um, there's a question also from Nick about. Um, is there a time frame for SOM to integrate with OMI or OpsBridge? And the answer is yes. Um, as soon as we have all of the monitoring um, and eventing um, flushed out in, into the product, we will also be integrating with OMI or the OpsBridge. And I would encourage you, um, if you or your customers will be at Discover, to please visit our display in the NDA or the Tech Showcase, and we can talk a lot more about that um, under NDA in, in the Tech Showcase at Discover. Um, let me just see if I missed anything else. Um, I know Warren had to leave the call, um, and he had a question about 3PAR, OneView, and Cloud System. And those are all things that um, 3PAR we already support in the product, of course. Um, and OneView and Cloud System are, um, are I assume he means Helion, um, are things that we have on our roadmap for the future as well. And I I think that looks like all of the, I think we addressed most of the questions here. Um, have all of the SE supported devices been ported over to SOM? That's a good question as well. Um, we ported the most, okay, so the, the, it depends. Some of the devices that we supported in SE are pretty old and legacy devices um, that we may not ever port over to SOM because they're end of support or end of life themselves. Um, other devices we have been porting over on a prioritization basis based on how um, how um, high priority they are at our existing customers and how high priority like newness and freshness um, within um, within the vendors, right? So HP, EMC, if there's something new that everybody's using, um, those are things that we've been um, porting over. Um, what I'd like to also point out, as I mentioned during um, during my presentation, was um, we will be able to um, release these devices on an ongoing basis. So we'll be rolling out new device support as um, as time goes on to, to the HP Live Network. And if you are part of our, I think you can sign up for it on the support services online. Um, you can support up, uh, sign up for alerts um, from us, and then you'll be alerted whenever we do um, upload something to HP Live Network so that you could go out there and download it. So anytime we have new device content um, that's released off cycle of a, an actual product release, we'll post it out to HP Live Network and an alert will get sent to you um, if you're on the if you're signed up to receive alerts. Um, so I think that's all the questions. I think if you go to the next slide I 
um, think we have a bit of um, how to dis how to um, there we go. It's for HP Discover how to um, register if you would like, and Vivit is offering a, a credit for you um, if you dis if you register through their Vivit link. And then next. And Vivit is offering, I don't know if Stephanie, you wanted to step in here um, and discuss the deep dive sessions that Vivit is offering upcoming. Um, you can register for those um, on their website. And this is just kind of a list of, of those that you could register for. Great. Th thank you, Kara. This is Ron. Um, so oh, as you can see there, there are uh, several Vivit deep dive sessions that are being offered this year at Discover on uh, Monday, June 1st from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, these sessions will allow you to hear real-world implementation experience and examples from practitioners who are in the field solving business problems with HP software tools every day. Uh, a cost per session is only $99, thanks to our sponsors. This is an incredible value, which normally costs $495. So uh, register for these sessions uh, through your new or existing HP Discover conference registration. Next slide, please. And uh, thank you for attending today's webinar. Please be sure to complete the short survey after the end of the webinar and opt in to receive more information from HP software. By opting in to hear more from HP, we'll be entered to win it to a drawing for an HP Slate 8 G2 tablet. Uh, just a reminder that that the webinar recording and slide deck will be posted to the Vivid website. In the next few days, you will receive an email with those links. Thank you. And Stephanie? Well, thank you all for attending today's webinar. A big thanks to Kara and Vikram for your wonderful presentation. And uh, in the next day or so, you'll receive an email, like Ron said, with the link on the Vivid website to view the on-demand recording, see the slide deck, and the Q&A in, in the coming week. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your uh, evening, day, or morning, wherever you are. And we'll look forward to seeing you at uh, another Vivid webinar, uh, an HP webinar. All right, take care, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you.